Hello, everybody in Hookist land. It's Jane, Sax, and Chris Robbins. And it's been an exciting week. We've actually got two lines and finished the first verse. And we've added a little bit to the pre-chorus. And I'm going to let Jane take over now and tell you a little bit more about where we're headed, what we've done this week, and all that good stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Um, oh, my gosh. There, Chris, weren't there so many good lines? Like, I was really moved by a lot. And it's interesting because these lines would determine the story of um, of who these characters are in the room and what's going on. So there were really important lines in this song. Um, I want to give some shout outs. Marilee, um, you asked me again to tell you the name of that man. I swallowed real hard, put my hand on your arm and said, that's my dad and I'm missing, et cetera. Oh my God, that's my dad. Um, Keith, you continuously sent like awesome setup lines, like um, the things I hadn't even thought of, like a setup for the the chorus, like I'll hold your hand when you're missing things and I'll um, try to ease the blur when you're missing things. Like you're, you're just really thinking in cool ways. Joe, bro. You suggested the theme and we put this uh, video up last week that we're going with your suggestion, which was an Alzheimer's story. Um, so thank you for that. Shout out to Joe bro. Lori L, your thought, you thought I was sleeping and probably thought I'd never know that the first man to hurt you is always the last man to go. Oh, effing great. I loved that. Blue always great stuff well the face was familiar but you couldn't tell me her name you were fading away like the lady who lives in that frame how cool is that the lady who lives in that frame um and um marianne and everybody really you all just really sent in cool stuff uh linda um corey um but okay so the winner Oh yeah, the winner. Hang on. This would be great. Check it out. Well, not great, but it's something. Hey, so now you can reveal it. <laughs> the winner um, is Kaylee. And okay, this was her line. It was you and your boy with his new Christmas toys and trains. You forgot he was me and you couldn't sleep till I told you his name because you're, and then it would be missing things. Um, we loved that because it's undeniable that you see that and it's a very familiar scene. You see, you see the two people, you see the Christmas tree, you see the wrapping paper ripped up on the floor, you see the trains, you see the toys and the fact that it just, it, it makes it clear why she couldn't sleep because she couldn't remember this person's name. However, we did tweak it a little bit and, um, Here's the lines that we tweaked it to, and I'll just tell you why quickly. It was you and a boy with his new Christmas toys and trains. You forgot it was me, said you just couldn't sleep till you knew his name. So I told you my name. You said, son, and then the chorus, I'm missing things. And this is making me tear up. Oh. Because, Kaylee, you gave us some good, good, good stuff. You think, Chris? Very, very good stuff. I mean, like you say, that just is so, the image of that, you can totally see that morning, you know? Right, right. Is that, you know, she's missing, she wants to remember that. And she's missing it. And he's missing her. Right, right. So now becomes clear that it's the mother and it's a son and those are the characters and it could have gone in a lot of different ways you guys had great great lyrics um this one just painted the picture and um it it, it i just we just felt like we couldn't pass it up because it painted such a great picture and that's what country songs that are six successful anyway do for the listeners they bring you into that little mini movie right. and it's such an right. important part of crafting okay. so hey chris what did you do um so i threw that little curve it's never a curveball to you about adding that line so yeah. i told you my name 
Yeah. Um, and I, I did that because I thought it was maybe a little more of an emotional punch. So what did that do I, for I, you? I needed that extra line. And so very simple, just those, the, we changed the chord progression a little bit at the end of the, uh, the second verse. So we just did that twice now. And so instead of just doing that once, we just repeated that, those three notes, those three chords, and, and then added that little line, the little lead in line to the chorus. And so now here we are at the chorus the big chorus we need to get that written and i've, I've got a new uh, we'll have a new upload so everybody can listen to the melody that i've got in there and um and yeah we need to get this one and so you could probably talk a little bit too about the chorus needs to be the same both time as we hear it throughout and the verse we'll need to get to it a different way yeah i mean this i would you know we've talked about this chris right that um that crafting it in a way where the chorus can stay the same, the same words, and that's really a very country thing to do anyway, but where the, the words stay the same, but what leads into those chorus words can slightly change the meaning of the chorus when you hear the same words, but a good example, and I think it was blue, you put it up on Facebook was, where have you been? You talked about that song from 1989, Kathy Matea, that song i'm so glad that you reminded me of that song because that craft that craft is just like what um we can do for this one and it's it's the the sections before the chorus change the meaning a little bit of the chorus but the words stay the same so right now what we're dealing with is the chorus is coming out out of the mother's mouth because um, we have, you said, son, I'm missing things. So the next line has to be something that after verse two, it can be said, but my feeling, and I think Chris and I feel the same way as it should be in verse two coming from the son's perspective that he's now missing who his mom used to be. Um, and it, there's so many ways of using missing things, but, um, it has to be coming out of his mouth too. So that's the challenge. Same words. Mm -hmm. I think this would be good. Coming from different perspectives. Maybe the second verse, we're not that far along yet, but maybe that'll be half, maybe it'd be half as long as the first verse. So it's something to keep in mind too is, and then we could double that pre-chorus again as well, I think. We'll, yeah we'll see when we get there we're, we're making it up as we go along so that's what we is. are and this is co-writing and i effing love if i can say effing on hookus <laughs> i love chris i love your melody for this chorus okay. i think it's it's really emotional and you taught me something because it's in what time is it i think of it as a waltz but it's in what time it is kind of it's a, just six eight so and I don't know. I like six A. Uh, it's a it's a good tempo to it's a good time signature to to be able to just really put your heart into the lyric and and drop a melody home. I think it, it gives you a lot of room to expand on. It just feels and yeah. You did a great job, and I can't wait for everyone to hear what you came up with melody wise, and to see all those suggestions oh coming in. I can't wait either. It's going to be good. It will. But we'll all right. Just start sifting. Get our, be a musical archaeologist over here, lyrical archaeologist, and <laughs> finding the right one. <laughs> We're digging. We're okay. Digging. All right. Hey, um, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. Can't wait to hear it. I remember you crying that one night at 3 a.m. On the edge of the bed. you and a boy with his new Christmas toys and trains You forgot it was me, said you just couldn't sleep till you knew his name So I told you my name And you said, son, I'm missing things